Hey, it's Chris from Military Aviation History, and I want to briefly talk about the B-17 P-63 collision over Dallas from a couple of days ago. Now, very important, this video is not going to be a speculation about what has happened. I think we should all wait for the formal investigation to complete their work and then publish their official report to see exactly what happened, because drawing conclusions from a couple of camera angles really doesn't serve any purpose here and in fact it's probably also going to do more harm than good. The CAF has also as far as I know requested that no speculation should occur at this point in time and I personally also know people who are over in the CAF, not directly those that were involved in this accident, but of course people who have lost uh, friends and colleagues in this incident. So in this video, I'm not going to be playing that footage in a loop, uh, you know, analyzing it in, by zooming in and going into the, you know, a couple of camera angles and trying to uh, ascertain what exactly has happened because that's not my job. We leave that to the professionals of the investigation team. Instead, what I want to do is talk about the P-63 and the forward visibility of these old vintage World War II war birds in general. Now, as some of you might know, I actually have this uh, series on YouTube called Inside the Cockpit, where I jump into aircraft and especially also World War II aircraft and explain you the ins and outs. So by now I've sat into quite a few of those aircraft and I can tell you there's some general trends about all these designs that are true when it comes to the forward visibility and the downward visibility that you have in, uh, as a pilot in those birds. So the first thing I will do is talk about the forward visibility and then I will take it over to talk about what happens when you take one of those aircrafts and you put it into a bank or into a banking turn. So regarding the forward visibility, let's talk about a couple of general points. First of all, every aircraft is different, but there is a general trend and that is that for the pilot sitting in one of these old vintage warbirds, the forward and upwards and upward sideways visibility is generally good, whereas the downwards visibility and the downward sideways visibility is generally poor. This has to do with the way of the cockpit is placed in these aircraft, also because of the nose where usually the engine sits, not in the P-63, but that's where the guns would be situated in that aircraft. So it still has that longish nose with of course the propeller hub at the end of it and the visibility therefore is generally equal to those aircraft that also have the engine exactly where you would expect it, namely in the nose. And also the sideways visibility is quite obscured by the actual wing because the pilot has to get onto the wing in order to step inside the cockpit, which means to put, if we put it all together, once again, the forward, upwards, and upward sideways visibility is good, whereas the downwards and the downward sideways visibility is generally poorer. I've also seen some people say that the P-63's visibility is very good forward and downwards. That is true on the ground when you're taxiing because that horizontal uh, angle towards the horizon on taxiing is better than having a tail dragger where you are more obscured and your field of view is forward of your aircraft, which is why sometimes in these old uh, archive footage from World War II you see those tail draggers actually serpentining as they're taxiing in order to have better angles or they have somebody sitting on the wing to direct them. But in terms of once they're in the air and flying, those aircraft are generally equal in terms of forward visibility, of course, with the differences of the minor differences between the actual aircraft designs and cockpit designs. Now, regarding the P-63, I have never sat inside of one, but I've sat in quite a couple of aircraft that are very similar to that. And I will also add now a couple of pictures supplied to me by members of the CAF and also Errol Cavett, whose uh, pictures I've used in the past. Now, the P-93 is simply the previous iteration of the P-63. They're very similar aircraft and also very similar cockpit layouts. And you can see there the general trend uh, continues with the sort of old vintage warbirds where the visibility is somewhat obscured forward and downward. I've also recently, only a couple of days ago, in fact, sat in the Swedish J-21. And although the wing layout is completely different with the wing set further back, so you have a relatively good sideways and downwards visibility, and the forward visibility, which is what I want to focus on in this segment, is relatively similar to that one you would, for example, get in the P-63 from what I can tell. And you can once again see that general trend where the forward and uh, forward downwards visibility is not as good as, of course, the upper and upper sideways visibility. And this is a general trend that has held true for basically much every, yes, every uh, World War II aircraft that I've sat in. So coming over from the Spitfire, the Hurricane, the uh, P-51, the BF-109, the ME-262, the Hawker Fury, 
the various biplanes from even before that, they all have those uh, limited visual angles in the aircraft's design. It is simply inherent in the aircraft's design. Now let's talk about what happens when you take the aircraft into a bank. So you're putting it at an angle to the horizontal, right? Forward visibility, of course, in a straight level line is relatively good with upwards visibility as well, whereas forward and downwards is somewhat poorer. Now, if we are assuming that this is the aircraft with the cockpit set round about here, and you go into a bank, you're gaining visibility to the side that you're banking towards. So in my case, this would be the port side. Well, you're right, but my port side. Uh, but I'm losing it because of that placement of the cockpit on top of the centerline fuselage to my starboard side. So my right side, your left side now. Uh, there is really no visibility through the center line because we don't have X-ray vision. And yes, there are some specialized aircraft, like for example, dive bombers or some fighters like the F4F Wildcat that had small windows on the underside of the aircraft in order to see what's happening below you. But that's really all just specialized for target spotting, specifically, for example, um, easy to recognize targets like ships on the open ocean or fortifications. It really, it's very restricted, this field of view, yeah? You can see that, for example, also in the JU-87. But what's happening then, of course, if we have banked and then we go into a banking turn on the aircraft, especially if we add a vertical displacement, almost appears to slide into the turn. So it doesn't really go like this. It goes more like this. There is, there is still that inertia that pushes it away from the side that it is turning towards, if that makes sense, right? So while we ask the pilot have a good field of vision towards the side that we're banking towards and turning towards, we have a corresponding loss of a field of view from the side that we're turning against. If we're starting to put this together now and assume that there are two aircraft side by side to each other on the same horizontal plane, then the field of view between these aircraft is probably going to be very clear and they will constantly have a view on each other. If we add a horizontal stagger like so, the chances are that there is still a good field of view between these two aircraft. But as soon as we add a vertical stagger like so, into this equation. Then we're starting, depending on what aircraft we're talking about and how the cockpit is set up, we're starting to see an issue with the visibility from one aircraft to the other and keeping an eye on, on that uh, wingman or the, the other person in the formation. And then if we were to assume that one aircraft goes into a bank, it gets even worse with the visibility loss that the uh, rear aircraft has on the uh, front aircraft. So that's all I have to say at this point until the formal investigation has completed. And uh, I'm a bit surprised how, how some people on the internet, especially on certain social media, started to break down this and immediately came to certain conclusions without actually having full access to all that data. And as well as that, how some finger pointing has already occurred, which I think is not beneficial at this point in time. Let's wait until the formal investigation has completed. And of course, my condolences go to the families and the friends who have lost their loved ones in this tragic incident.